Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming up this week, a baseball coach is arrested at Pop Century for touching young children inappropriately. Port Canaveral gets evacuated because of a suspicious odor. And Theme Park Insider releases their awards for the best in theme parks. And we'll tell you how Orlando fared this year. All that coming up next. From the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is The Diz Unplugged. This is the Diz Unplugged, episode 900 for the week of July 12th, 2016. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming to you live from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, John Magi. Hi, everybody. Kevin Close. Hi, everyone. Kathy Whirling. Hi, everybody. Julie Martin. Hi. And back in the production nook, our associate producer, Oliver Green on the switch. Hello, everyone. Our producer, Craig Williams. Hello. And other associate producer. Can we see him on camera? We can't. No, we're going to keep it a Oh, there secret. he is. Rhino's back there, but he's actually working on, <laughs> he's working on a video that will be played uh, during our Mega Meet weekend which is coming up the weekend of July 20, uh, 22nd. And that's a perfect uh, segue into some things I want to talk about regarding that. First of all, uh, as is done at all meets, where you are going to be doing a silent auction, we have quite a few items. There is a large number of items from my personal collection that are going to be auctioned off. As a matter of fact, they're all sitting on my pool table right now, getting pictures of everything. Um, but the unlike other meets, uh, this silent auction is not going to be limited to just those in attendance uh, during Mega Meet weekend. This is actually going to be online. And uh, what I will tell everybody now is on your iPad, your Android phone, your iPhone, uh, download the app handbid.com. Handbid is the name of the app. H-A-N-D-B-I-D. That is the service that we're going to be using. And uh, the, our auction isn't live yet, so don't go looking for it. But go ahead and set your account up. Um, all the proceeds from that auction are going to go to Give Kids the World. We're trying to raise as much as we can through it. So we're going to make it available to everyone. And uh, I will be opening the auction up early, likely early next week. I don't know exactly what day yet because there's still some more items. We still have stuff coming in. I want to make sure we've got everything in and ready to go before we, we launch the auction. But my plan is to launch it a few days early so you'll have a chance. So get, go down that, download that now and uh, stay tuned. So we're going to have that. Uh, also, on Friday, we opened up bookings for various events that are going on during Mega Meet weekend and I grossly underestimated how much time you people wanted to spend with us. Um, I figured you'd want to see, you know, do some things but that, you know, you guys are in Orlando you want to be in the parks doing stuff well I was wrong um, and the events that we released on Friday just filled like that, like within an hour everything seemed to be Full up, um, including I'm, I'm I'm auctioning off a lunch here in the studio for for six people, and right now the minimum bid is seven hundred dollars a plate to be here in the studio. It's being catered. We're providing transportation. There's going to be a full bar. We got some little gifts for you. It's going to be a lot of fun, and you'll love my caterer. They're fantastic. But um, all this stuff just filled up. So. We kind of scrambled and got creative and came up with some more events to do. And we released those, I think, on Saturday. And then those filled up. Right. So we've done, we've released all the events we can release. I can't, you know, everybody's kind of. Spread a little thin. Spread that a little thin. So I think I might add one more in. No. Okay. I'm fine then. <laughs> Why? What Sorry, do you want to do? Uh, a lot of, I've noticed some feedback. Uh, people were. 
looking for uh, more activities at night. So one of the nights I was thinking about uh, maybe just getting a group over watching pole dancing. The no pole dancing. I've seen uh, it before, and it's not pretty <laughs> when Craig does it. He has too much to drink, and then he thinks he's a he's a stripper. Yeah, a that female does happen. Stripper. That happens. Um, I was able to. On Friday night, I finally got to watch the Star Wars fireworks for the first time over at Hollywood Studios. They were amazing. I cannot wait to get back over there and watch it again. So I think it might be fun if just a group, nothing special, nothing fancy, just I will be there because I want to have a reason to see them again as soon as possible. So people want to get together and go just watch them. It's cool. We actually tried to do an event there. We tried to put together a a private group area and and dessert and... Uh, Hollywood Studios is not playing with the groups department at all for this, so uh, I couldn't even get anything. So it's pretty cool. I got to stand in the uh, the dessert area for whenever I saw it and got a sample of the dessert party because it was with a media event. And I would understand if they're selling this out every night why the desserts they were offering were phenomenal. They were extremely themed to Star Wars. Everyone got a free Chewbacca sipper cup on their way out too. Uh, so. It seemed really good. Well, I mean, you live streamed them that night yeah. on Facebook, and then the next day you put up the 4K video, which is on our YouTube channel. Yeah. And I watched that 4K video, and it's amazing, amazing, that yeah. fireworks show. Yeah. I was blown away. Just when you think Disney can't do fireworks better, they do something like that, and you're like, okay, wow. Yeah. So I have something also to add. If you're going to participate in the scavenger hunt, you need to download an app on your phone. It's free. It's called Goose Chase. G-O-O-S-E-C-H-A-S-E. And the tagline is, to make sure you have the right one, scavenger hunts for the masses. And the folks running the event are only asking that you do it in advance because we're afraid if we get a whole bunch of people trying to download on Disney's yeah, that's a good point. internet, that we might it might slow everything down. So if you can show up at the event with Goose Chase on your phone, they will provide details later, but it's very easy to download from the iTunes store. So, and we're going to have, uh, we're going to be sending out emails to everybody who's registered, depending on what you've registered for. We will be sending you out emails with specifics on where to meet, what time, all that good stuff. Um, but we're very excited. We're very, very excited about, uh, about May. I'm a little nervous. I'll be honest. I'm a little nervous, um, but um, I'm excited and I'm really looking forward to a great weekend to celebrate 10 years of doing this show. Of course, we culminate the weekend on uh, Monday the 25th, which is the actual 10-year anniversary of our show. And uh, just hard to imagine like what's happened in the course of the last 10 years. So very, very excited about it. Uh, excited to see everybody. 500 people coming to join us. So it's going to be good. So enough of that. Let's move on and just talk about uh, some of the shows we have coming up this week uh, all through the month. Uh, The Dreams Unlimited Travel Podcast has been doing shows about Disney's Olani. They're also giving away a trip to Olani this month, but you have to watch the show in order to get the details of that. Coming up this next Monday, part three is uh, uh, all about Oahu. The island of Oahu. Yep. Which we talk about some of the things that Kevin and I did with our group outside of Alani. Um, we often get questions about why would you go for so long? What is there to do? Mm. It's just a beach. How could you enjoy a beach for that long? Oh, no. And we filled every minute of every day and still felt like we and wanted more. never went more. to the beach. <laughs> yeah, never went to the beach. <laughs> Not once. And still felt like we wanted to do more. So this is all about the other stuff we did. And we did some surprise stuff. Um, we went to a rum factory of all places mm-hmm. on Oahu. Who would have thought there was a rum factory in Hawaii? So it was pretty cool. Well, you know, after uh, my trip in 2014, when I did the Pride of America and went around the different islands and really loved the islands, I found out that Oahu was my favorite. Right. Um, and, he, and, you know, the reason Oahu is my favorite is because... It offers a little bit of everything the other islands offer. I can get that kind of relaxed beach experience that I get in Maui. Uh, We have Waikiki if you want to do the concrete jungle shopping excursions. You have the North Shore, which is, you know, really just like this pristine, old Hawaii beauty up there. Um, There's Kailua if you want the rainforest, tropical jungle feel. Exactly. And it'll... uh, uh, 
Alani is kind of on a desert. It's on the leeward side, yeah. yeah. It's kind of a desert feel to it, so except for Colina, which apparently sucks all the water out of the rest of the island because everything's lush and green. Yeah, and exactly. So yeah, and so all right. So that's this coming Monday. Coming Monday. Uh, Disunplug.com. You can find all these shows. Uh, of course, every uh, also every Monday. Uh, the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplug with Tom Bell and his team. And what do we have in store for them this week? On this week's Disneyland show, Nancy has some tips for poor college students on how to get the most out of their Disneyland vacation. Oh, I thought you were going to say she has tips for poor people on how not to bother. <laughs> no? I've got okay. nothing. All right. <laughs> I thought you could have come back with something. No, I'm, I'm... Yeah, you lose it. Well, you know, we have to actually we have to congratulate Craig. On uh, closing on his new house, he and Kylie bought a new house. Which I thought that was going to be your thing for the meet. Come to my new house and help me move. (laughs) Carry my mattress for me. I will still offer for people who are getting in early on that Thursday. That's the last day in my apartment. If you want to come over and help clean the floors and stuff, because I'll be kind of busy with the universal show. Do you realize people are seriously going to offer? They're going to offer to do it. They'll take you up on it. (laughs) Got to remember our audience. We have have a wonderful audience. And, uh, And... they, there are people who, listening right now who will absolutely come and clean your floor. Some of them poor college kids that Nancy's afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> I just want them to know I wouldn't be taking advantage of them because I will be there for at least two minutes to say hi <laughs> oh, before I leave. You're a um, prince. <laughs> yes. You'll do, a, you'll do a brief meet and greet. Yes. Uh, and no some, photos. Some last minute instructions <laughs> yes. on how to clean the floors. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I've trained you well. Thank you. Oh, I gotta color my beard, Lord in heaven! <laughs> I'm just sitting here looking at this image, like God. Something shiny. Yeah, really. <laughs> well, attention. yeah, something shiny. The gray. Um, all right, so that's the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged every Monday, DizUnplugged.com, and of course every Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern, live. Craig Williams, Rhino Clavin, and Oliver Green on the Universal Edition, and what. What are we talking about this week? Uh, this I know where week, we're going this week, but where are we talking about this uh, week? This week, we are finishing up our Royal Pacific coverage. Uh, last week, we gave you the overview and our thoughts on the actual hotel itself. Soft. And this week, uh, we are going to cover all the dining options. And we did every single dining option available. So we will present our thoughts on what is worth getting and what's not. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you the Reader's Digest version. Jake's Bar American, yes. Everything else, no. Um, oh, there so goes your show. Yeah, it's there's fun. your show. I've saved you. I've saved you an hour. Because um, so we're going to be uh, actually, uh, you know, if you're following us on social media, we're going to be uh, covering the opening of Sapphire Falls this yes. week. So, so we're we'll excited be... to see what they've done with that, especially since you know driving by the building looks like a hospital. Um, so I was surprised, but. <laughs> Um, so did Royal Pacific when they were building that, and it still does. I assume you've already talked about on your show the new hotel, the parking garage hotel that they've announced? Uh, no, we didn't really talk about that They've yet. announced a new hotel that's going to yes. be up against the parking garage. <laughs> I think He's got nothing. I, I got nothing. <laughs> there will be views. Oh, yeah, of the 96 Accord. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good year for Accords. <laughs> Um, and of course, every Friday ish, Diz Pop with Rhino Clavin and Oliver Green. Sometimes, um, <laughs> sometimes not. Depends. It depends on who Rhino can rope into doing a show with him. Uh, what are you doing this week, Rhino? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> this week, Oliver will be joining my light. for a uh, special edition Arts and Crafts Diz Pop, where we're going to be talking about all things Ghostbusters, the movies, the TV shows, video games, comic books, and doing a little Ghostbuster Arts and Crafts with a alcoholic Ecto Cooler drink. And then uh, Craig and I will be doing a review of the movie that will hopefully be up Friday-ish. We're going to hope to see it Friday morning or maybe Friday afternoon at some point. And this is the Ghostbusters the movie. movie. Yeah, the yeah. new Ghostbusters movie. Got a movie. great review in the New York Times. It's 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 doing – it's got right now on Rotten Tomatoes like 79%. So I'm I'm pretty happy I watched all the movies this weekend. So I'm excited for it. Right now, they all want to know how you're doing. Uh, yeah. So I had, took a trip to the emergency room yesterday. I uh, uh, For Diz Pop? Yes, um, the <laughs> hot glue gun. Show them your arts and crafts everywhere. project. My <laughs> arts and crafts project is a new thumb we'll be making this week for me. So, 
with the help of Oliver. Oh, Corey that's has, that's he out. actually does have some fake thumbs you could borrow if you need to cover it up. That's not something you hear every day. <laughs> <laughs> that just leads to more my questions. Has, a magic trick. My, my husband has extra thumbs <laughs> if you need one. That just leads to what more questions. What goes on in the Martin house? <laughs> um, the children are very crum- clumsy. <laughs> Draw thumbs. So, all right. That's, uh, that's what's coming up. What, what are we... Hello, I'm doing a show here. <laughs> I think they're playing dice. What's going on? Um, Are we broken? No. no I, I can so. hear you still. What? It, okay, that's not an answer. Let's move on. Yeah. We're good. I think it'll be fine. What's the matter? The chat room will let us know if anything's yeah. going wrong. Rhino screwed up the board whenever he was I laying on top of it. He, he, yeah, it's, it's doing... You fat rolled my board? <laughs> Possibly the worst sushi you could ever order. The fat roll. Rhino's fat roll? <laughs> Rhino's fat roll. Um, oh, okay, no, no, no. There's some place I can go. I won't. Um, God, I still have the mind of an eighth grader. Well, Julie has extra thumbs. <laughs> well, okay, no. Um... All right, so uh, last week uh, in housekeeping, I met what? Connecting with Walt. Oh, connecting with Walt, yes, the of last course. One. Um, that is going to be up on Friday, and this week we talk about why Disney chose, Walt Disney in particular, chose to include a castle in all of uh, his kingdoms and where the Imagineers look to for inspiration in designing each castle. Okay. Fun. I like that. Good. You won't listen. No. <laughs> I'd rather read it in a book. Okay. Can you guys write a book? <laughs> all right. So, all right. Thank you for that, Craig. Uh, now, last week I mentioned um, Designers United Against Hate uh, on the show, that they were uh, the six designers that were creating uh, Disney-inspired T-shirts to raise money to help the victims uh, and families of uh, Pulse, the Pulse shooting. And uh, I ordered mine last week, and they came in the mail yesterday. I'm wearing one of them. Right now, you can't really see unless I kind of do that. You see the kind of little rainbow flaggy thing across the omnibus. Um, they're all kind of like that. They subtly incorporate, you know, the pride, uh, the pride rainbow into the designs. I will tell you, these shirts are they're American Apparel shirts. They are great quality. I was really impressed when I got oh, them. Love the way they look. Love the way they wear. They're great shirts. I just want want everybody to know they're real, and I really like them. So um, I would have several if they made a wider range of sizes. Maybe you can write to them. I have several times. <laughs> so uh, designersunitedagainsthate.com, I believe is the website. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, we'll put something else up in the show notes page mm-hmm. so you can check that out. So please support them. And uh, you get a really cool Disney-inspired shirt that you can't buy at Disney World. I think yours is awesome. I really and do. They're very clever designs. They're, yeah. they're brilliant designs. The you guys see the other really two cool. I got. They're really nice. I've been paying attention. They need a wider range of sizes. sizes. Yeah. I like the font they used. Are you hearing me? Well, I don't think it's them. I think it's the company that they're... There are other companies that offer a wider range okay. of sizes. All right. Calm All right. down. Bitter. Party of one. Bitter. Size yeah. queen. <laughs> uh oh. Things are not going to go well this evening. The missus is getting a whooping when she gets home. <laughs> um, all right, so that's everything I have for housekeeping. Does anybody else have anything they want Just, to talk about? Um, got a couple more days on the flatties. We're almost up to five hundred dollars. I'm sorry, Kathy. Is her, is her audio turned up? Incredibly yeah. Talk for me, Kathy. Hey, we have flat. <clears throat> We have flatties that we're trying to um, raise some more money. We're almost up to five hundred dollars. That's awesome. awesome. Help us That's great. Go I have over been 500. asked. I apologize. I That's interrupted okay. you. I have been asked if we would do something with the flatties during the show. Inappropriate. No. Okay. Are we going to have microphones at the show? I thought if you wanted us to put your flatty in front of our microphone, but there has to be a minimum donation for you to do that. Oh, good idea. What do you think? I love that idea. And that's only I am gonna... all about doing whatever we can do. Well, I will be happily put your flatty in front of my microphone and talk about you. I talk about you anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do that for free. Um, but I thought if we all offered to do that, but I think we should come up with a minimum donation and it's not the $10 she's selling no, the flatty. No, pretty big. No, I think for that, you need to pony up. A buck fifty. Uh, yeah. 
If you want a flatty in front of our microphones, it's $150. But that includes the 10 that she's charging for the flatty mm-hmm. to begin with. Well, and we may even be having another microphone-related auction becoming available that's even better. Okay, well, so there's, there. a, there's a way to step on my oh, idea. Huh? Really? So there. I'm not going to tell you what it is. And we but may be doing better. something even better than what he's talking about. Um, there may be a chance to own Diz Unplugged mics. Yeah, except this one. Except Pete's. Except this one. This was given to me as a gift and has great well, sentimental value. Well, that's not value, so. instead of what I was talking no. about. That's in addition to. In addition to. to right. Sorry if I said it that way. I don't listen to myself talk. No, neither do we. Um, <laughs> I pick and choose what I listen to. But I think that's a great idea. So I think that's why, a, also great what you guys raised so far. I do, too. That's I really apologize great. for interrupting you. And so, also, oh, okay. just so everybody knows that if, um, you know, through this software that we're going to be using for the silent auction, uh, if you just want to donate, you're going to have the ability to do that as well. If you don't want to buy anything, although I'm sorry, I can't imagine. I'm looking through the items that we've got that have been donated, the stuff. I'm... There is literally stuff off my walls. Literally, I went around my house and took things off my walls uh, to auction off because I want to have some skin in the game for this. And not just the stuff I'm not using and want to get rid of, but I want stuff. Some of this stuff really means a lot to me. But if you just want to, if you just want to donate, you're going to be able to do that as well. So, And um, um, Kathy's Crafting Corner has whipped up some items, and uh, Krabby Katie's Corner so realize- is <laughs> making some items too. Kay. Uh, 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 what is it, Crafty Kathy's Corner? KKK? Yes. yes. Well, do you do, I, do, you I did do this with a white sheet? CC. Yes, C. Yes. CLC. Kathy's CC. Because <laughs> I thought about that when I posted it the other day. I'm like, no, not going there. <laughs> going back to this idea, you can only do it once, right? Once ours has been sold, if we do this. Correct. I've been asked if I would right. do this. So once our microphone has been sold, so how many people are going to be on stage? <sighs> This I forgot how many nine. say. We said nine. But also we yeah. have the guys back in the production facility, so they'll have mics, I assume. But they won't be on camera. I don't think you guys will be on camera, will you? We should be on camera. Should. Okay. I think we, I rigged so something up. So you could buy Talk one for producer. each of us, and we mm-hmm. will mention your name live on the show. So what is Krabby Katie, Katie doing? <laughs> she's making Doing dip. some Disney-related Crafts. She's writing. She's she's writing a, a she's super di- disenfranchised manifesto. <laughs> she's writing. When she crafts, and I have letters. to leave the room. I'm not allowed to be in the craft room while she's creating. So she's violent. Yeah, she's crabby. crabby. She's crabby. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> I have something undis related, but um, my sister Taylor, who most of you know, you've known her for a long time. She leaves for Haiti today on a mission mm. trip, her first ever. Wow. Uh, out That's of the awesome. country anyway. So um, some of you generously donated to her GoFundMe page. So I want to let you know she was leaving tomorrow, thanking you guys for helping her out. And um, hopefully she has a safe visit and gets back safely. That's awesome. So send good thoughts her way, That's prayers, great. whatever you do. That's awesome. Good for her. Cool. I'm going to start a GoFundMe page. <laughs> Well, as long as we're doing that, um, I have a family member that's having the procedure done that killed my husband. Oh. Having that procedure done tomorrow. So if you could send up some healing thoughts and prayers that, you know, she makes it through, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. For sure. All right. Anything else for housekeeping? All right, I have successfully stretched out housekeeping for 27 minutes, so I'm proud of myself because we got a light show this week, and um, I was afraid we were going to be done in 35 minutes, but unless John's going to do the news and rapid fire in the next 10 minutes. Oh, I have a feeling some of these news stories might spark some conversation. Might. I might have picked them for that reason. I think you might have. But All right, over to Johnny with the news. All right, our first news story. Baseball coach arrested for groping several boys at Disney's Pop Century, Pop Century Resort. Nicholas Groth, 20, of Oak Creek, Wisconsin, was arrested Thursday night, July 7th, for inappropriately touching young boys in the pool at Disney's Pop Century Resort. Groth is a boys baseball coach with Rally Baseball, who was in town for Disney's International Salute to Baseball tournament with his team. According to reports, the victim said they were throwing a ball around in the pool with Groth when he grabbed their buttocks. One boy told them to please stop when it happened several times. Groth asked two of the boys what they were talking about and asked if they were going to tell on him. 
The arrest report said one of the boys identified Groth at the ESPN Wide World of Sports field. The report says several children pointed at him and said, quote, he was acting weird and touching our butts. When speaking with investigators, Groth did admit to the incident and said he was sorry for doing it, but that it was not his personality. One investigator wrote, quote, during the interview, Groth appeared to be in a mental struggle. He didn't answer questions regarding if he touched the children's buttocks in the pool with direct answers, but rather took some time to reply. His responses disturbed me, and I asked if he was on a medicine or if he had mental illness. The victims are 7, 12, and 13 years old. It is not clear if they were players on his team or if they were other guests at the resort. He is being held on no bond on five charges of lewd or lascivious molestation. This is like the third story. It in is. It's two weeks. It's getting scary, is what it is. Um, I don't know why. All of a sudden, this is. I mean, look, we've had stories before where things like this have been happening, but I don't think we've ever, in ten years of doing this, <clears throat> ever had three stories in a week. <clears throat> so, and I mean, again, look, I'm not an apologist for Disney. It's nothing they can do about. No. It. I mean, they really can't unless they're going to start. You know, doing background checks on guests. Um, I don't know that there's anything they anything more they can do to prevent this. Kids did the right thing. Yeah. Kids went and found somebody and said, "Hey, um, so this guy's off the streets, and this guy's not doing it to anybody else. At least not right now. Um, you know, and now it's up to the, you know, the courts and the police to make sure this guy gets whatever the fair judgment is." The but, last couple of weeks have been weird. Yeah. Just it's been it's, really. It's hard been a weird to, summer. It's, it's been a bad been summer. Hard to it turn on the news. It's been a bad summer. Do you think these reports are more are are a result of the current culture we have, where we're saying to people, "See something, say something, report bad it behavior." Is. That perhaps this was always going on. Yes. But yeah. maybe now kids feel more empowered, hundred percent agree, more comfortable, hundred percent agree. That's, kudos to those parents because they've taught them. They've well. taught them. You know. Your body belongs to you. Right. And because that wasn't, you know, when we were coming up, that wasn't really part of the discussion. Well, even when I was teaching, we had to... <laughs> what in the world is going this light? On? Because Hi, I now look like I'm... Rhino got, I asked Rhino to get me a soda. God. And... I'm on some painkillers. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank excuses, you. Excuses, excuses. I got... He scared the daylight. <laughs> <laughs> Rhino's acting weird and touching my buttocks. Um... You know, that was crazy. Like I said, it? when we were coming up, when we were coming up, growing up, those weren't discussions no. that we had. Uh, even when I was, it teaching, happened. We it had happened stranger to danger talks. Right. Don't get in a van. Right. right. But this was never, you know, don't take candy from strangers. But it was never. Right. This. We were much more concerned about razor blades in our apples on Halloween. Yep. Um, or wearing helmets when you rode a bike. Now that you know, now that it, it's an open discussion now. It is openly discussed in schools. It is openly discussed by parents. And so kids are being taught that it's okay to say something because so much of this went unaddressed because of shame, because mm -hmm. kids were afraid. Kids were ashamed to say anything. I also think the news of religious organizations being involved in this has made this much more prominent. Right. And unfortunately. Unfor unfortunately. All of it's unfortunate. You know, and well, I'm just saying that I don't think that religious organizations are necessarily more more inclined to it above the. I didn't mean that. I just meant that no, it's more in the news. Because that's why. Of that. No, I'm just saying that I, I wasn't suggesting that's where you were going. I'm saying the reason I'm saying unfortunately is because I think that can be the perception that oh look, it's a religious or no, no, I don't think it's any more prevalent. I think it gets more sensationalized. When it is a religious organization, you saw that with the scandal with Catholic priests. You've seen it with other, other things. Um, that certainly adds to the sensationalism of it, which the media certainly loves. But this is not, you know, I, I don't believe for a second that it's you know a religious thing versus it's it's an illness that exists in our society. And yes, these men, and I'm going to get, I know I'm going to get hate mail for saying this. These men, and in some cases women, absolutely need to be put in jail. There needs to be penalties. There needs to be treatment. This can be treated. This can be treated. But when you throw somebody in jail, it's the same thing with addiction. And I'm not equating the two things. I'm just saying that when you have someone who commits crimes based on 
because they're an addict. Uh, and then you just throw them in jail. Yes, they need to go to jail. But right. without that treatment, they're going to repeat it again. Same thing is true with these men. They can be treated. They need to be getting treatment as well. They need There needs to be incarceration. No question. There absolutely has to be incarceration. These children have to be protected first and foremost above anything else. But we throw them in jail and then say, ah, good, we threw them in jail. Well, guess what? He's sitting in jail planning how he's going to do it again. Because this is an illness. I don't think anybody can, can, can disagree with the fact that touching children inappropriately is an illness. But they have to get treatment. That's how we stop it. That's how we prevent it from continuing to happen. These people have to get treatment. And, of course, money for treatment isn't there for anything. For anything. We've got plenty of money for other things, but we don't apparently have any money for that. So, okay. Next. All right. Our second news story. Port Canaveral closed briefly due to suspicious package. Port Canaveral was locked down for a brief period of time around 2 p.m. on Sunday, July 9th, when an odor coming from a passenger luggage arose arose suspicion. The area was... Used suspicion. The copy that Pete sent me said arose. (laughs) The area was secured, and a Coast Guard robot was sent in to investigate. The odor turned out to be a broken can of hairspray. The Coast Guard I hate that happens. I hate that. The Coast Guard reopened the area shortly after. The Carnival Conquest and Celebrity Constellation were the two ships in port at the time. Well, I've had I've had foul smells coming from your luggage. <laughs> Only because a bottle of Listerine oh. broke and it was like the cool blue and there were white sneakers. And that now I on in that luggage I put my toiletry it has like a it's like a clamshell. And so there's like the clothes go up top and then down the bottom is where I put my shoes and my toiletry bag. So that's where it broke. So my white sneakers were forever blue. And no matter what I did, but this, um, well, I mean, what kind of hairspray was it? If it was, the odor was so foul that they were. Aquanet. There are <laughs> that's what I think. I think it must have been Aquanet. You think it was like one of those giant cans? Like, like from hairspray, like, right. from the, like from the movie Hairspray? We were getting on a uh, Royal Caribbean ship one day, and our friend Matt from Australia was traveling with us, and he didn't get luggage tags in Australia, but his room was right next to ours. So we put our luggage tags on it, figured deliver the suitcase to our room, and we would just give it to him when he came in. Well, we arrived in our room and our TV was doing this. Big red warning light. Please come to security immediately. <laughs> oh no! What? <laughs> so we called down. What's the matter? You have to come identify something in luggage, and it was Matt's suitcase. So we spent a lot of time wondering, what do you think he brought? <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave that at that. That conversation went all over the place. So John and Matt went down, and come to find out, it was a bottle of Febreze. And the gentleman explained to him that no irons were allowed on the ship. <laughs> and they it's a true story. spent 20 minutes trying to explain to him that free breeze wasn't an iron <laughs> but it says on it for ironing it for releasing wrinkles is what it says i think instead of ironing right well this is you can't use it because you can't have an iron and, and they went Matt around said do you see a cord <laughs> this is plugging well, in finally he finally said to him well just throw the febreze away <laughs> and then no well i don't know what else to do then if i can't have it and you're not going to throw it away what do we do so they finally said, all right, we'll confiscate it. And they wouldn't let him have it because it was an iron. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Royal Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> Keeping you safe from Febreze. <laughs> <laughs> and hair, and hair spray, apparently. That had nothing to do with the story I like that the, you just told. I like that they brought in the robot. How much did that cost? <laughs> like $40,000. Well, no, look, yeah. all kidding aside, yeah, glad they did I'm, I'm fine with that. And, if you, if you think anything is amiss <laughs> with luggage on an airplane, a cruise ship, or anything else that's going to carry me and luggage on the same thing, send in the robots. Send in whatever you've got to send, send in. Send in the clowns. Send in the clowns. <laughs> Are you surprised that there was a robot at the ready? <laughs> I guess I am. Well, it seems well, it was like... was the Coast Guard. It was the Coast Guard who sent it in. Oh. Um, so, you know, it's good to know that stuff's being done. Um and, you know, I think it probably did a service to the people on the Carnival cruise ship that just, you know, got to delay 
the torture of being on a Carnival cruise ship oh, by a few hours. Oh, man. Although um, someone on the Carnival cruise ship went on a whole flat hair with bad hair. Yeah. <laughs> what were you going to say? Well, I, I was that was going to happen one way or the other. Because everyone usually is partial to a certain brand, like shampoo, toothpaste, mm. whatever. She can't get that on the ship. She has to buy whatever they have. I was going to say that um, they, he, they closed the parking garage at or city the bridge going into City Walk yesterday because they had a suspicious package. So, again, this is another one of those sign of the times. When did you ever hear that? And yeah. I'm glad they're doing that, but it's scary as if you're one of those people that are there. Well, you know, it's... It's been a weird month. It's been, just yeah. been a weird, weird summer, and it's been a bad summer, you know? Sad mm, summer. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's been so much going on in the world, and I don't want to take anything away from the events in Dallas or in Baton Rouge or in Minnesota, but I just would like everybody to remember that 49 people were shot about three miles from here a little less than a month ago. And, uh, you know, we're still, we're still reeling from that here. And, you know, the media has moved on, but we haven't. Mm. It's um, still very prominent here. We can see it everywhere we go. And, and I don't want to, you know, and I don't say that because, if, you know, obviously life has to go on, but we can remember. And, you know, I just, you know, watching all the news coverage, I remember, you know, when that attention was here and that we're just, you know, reminds me that the news is often uh, jumping from one horrifying tragedy to another. Um, and that's why I... I, I have trouble watching because it's either that mm -hmm. or this lovely old Jewish man is yelling at me on the television today as he endorses Hillary Clinton. Um, <laughs> like, why is this man yelling at me? I was like, what kind of cable do you have? <laughs> it's awfully specific. The Larry David Network. <laughs> now I got it. I, um, I actually, for my own sanity, I had to stop watching the news. It's really mm -hmm. gotten to that point. I have point. to read the news. Yeah. Now. I go to the, like I'll go to the websites and things like that. I have a list of news channels and I try and find I read several of them so I get a less biased approach because one is biased and the next one is biased. But if you read them all and sort of put them together, but then you read something like the London Times and they talk about things that happen all over the world and the word Kardashian doesn't come up anywhere <laughs> yeah, in the news feed. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Watching news internationally is a very different experience mm -hmm. than watching it here. I mean, uh, they do not report on who Taylor Swift is dating. <laughs> well, not it's just who she's dating, who she wants to have a child with now. Oh. <laughs> Can I get on to my third very important news story, please? <laughs> do. My very serious news report. Orlando has several winners in the Theme Park Insider Awards. The Theme Park Insider Awards have been announced, and there are several winners from Orlando. The best new roller coaster is Mako, the shark-themed coaster that opened recently at SeaWorld Orlando. To be considered in the new category, the attraction must have opened between July 1st, 2015 and June 30th of 2016. Portofino Bay Hotel at Universal Orlando took home the award for best hotel for the fourth consecutive year. This is the sixth time overall that that hotel has been chosen as number one. i got to be honest. You know what? It absolutely deserves it. It absolutely deserves it. It's an incredible hotel. It is my favorite hotel in Orlando. i got to be honest. Also on the list is Victoria and Albert's, the signature restaurant at Disney's Grand California Resort and Spa. Okay, Grand Floridian? Yeah. What did <laughs> I say? Grand California. California. Did I really say I'm that? Not <laughs> <know> what Pete's <laughs> Copy says it's no. Not in the Grand Californian. We, you, I make fun of you for this all the time. Uh huh. Because you do it too. Victorian Albert's is consistently rated high by critics, and this year was no exception. It took top honors at Best Hotel Restaurant. Uh, there were a few other winners in the Disney family from other parks around the world. Tokyo Disney Sea won Best Theme Park for the fifth consecutive year. From what I've heard, that's accurate. I'm going next year. I know, excited. I'm going with you. I know. One of that park's restaurants, Magellan's. Was, was named Best Table Service Restaurant. I'm going there, too. Newly opened Shanghai Disney Resort already has an attraction winning awards. Pirates of the Caribbean Battle of the Sunken Treasure was named Best New Attraction. Going there. Me, too. Disney's California Adventure, Adventure made the list with Frozen Live at the Hyperion winning Best New Show. Uh, Universal Studios Hollywood had one honor with their version of the Three Broom Broomsticks Restaurant winning Best Quick serve restaurant. 
and that obviously is their counterpart to our. Okay, here's the thing: Potter. is that for I, I about a, a hundred years in a row, this website gave best theme park restaurant to Mythos at oh, Islands of Adventure. Yeah, that is true. Okay. We talked about it every year. So, <laughs> you know, I it's like <laughs> really, really Mythos. Mythos sucks. Mythos has always yeah, it's sucked. Always sucked. It has sucked the day it opened. It sucked today, and it sucked every day in between. And every year when this report would come out, we would talk about those. And so I'm glad to see that Mythos is not on the list. <laughs> I think last However, year. However, are think, you questioning their new choices now? I, well, you know, it does. You know, when you say Mythos is the best in theme park restaurant, I yes, everything else you say is your opinion is in question. You know. Although, you know, some of these things I can agree with. Um, but as long as Mythos isn't on the list, I'll give them another chance. Mythos is not the best anything. <laughs> okay. It's not the best anything. It's not even the best. It's not even the best restaurant in Islands of Adventure. <laughs> it's not even the best of the worst. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, All right. I, okay. That'll do it for the news. Right, one other story I want to talk about, just because it's been catching my eye yesterday and today, and... Uh, it's all over the boards. It's all Pokemon Go. There was even a murder around this. Mm-hmm. It's burglaries. It's like I, I I I have very limited understanding. I understand it is an app. I played it. That is, of course, you did. Um, is augmented reality, and like so, you go around and you find things with this augmented reality app with Pokemon. Um, it is the most download. It, it is the most downloaded app, or it's breaking records in terms of the speed at which it's being downloaded. Stocks of Nintendo, who's I guess part owner in this franchise, went through the roof um, the last couple days. Um, their stock surged like twenty five percent. There's more people on this Pokemon Go. Why don't you move the microphone so you can? Okay, just, as well. No, I like to whisper into his ear. I'm done with you. Um, <laughs> On this side. Fine, I'll get, I, There you go. Don't I, touch my are. board again. I only know this because I'm going to talk about it on Dizpop. Don't so fat roll the board. I was reading. I'm sucking it in here today, right now. Um, because uh, I'm going to talk about it on Dizpop. But yeah, there, there was. It led a girl to find a dead body in a river. It's now people are using it to lure people into robbing them. And also, this man who lives in what was once a church, his house is like what they refer to as a gym. So you go and like train your Pokemon here. And people are showing up at his house all hours of the night. And um, so it's got some weird like issues with it. But there's more people on this app than there are on, on Tinder already. So help me a little bit here. You've played it. Yeah. What the hell it is it? What, what it was. So I don't, what are you I don't, doing? I don't necessarily <laughs> care for Pokemon. But so what you do is you download the app. Oh, the other thing that the app's doing is if you sign in with Google, it basically has access to all your Google accounts. So you need to register separately on the website and not use your Google to log in. Okay. But you download the app. You turn it on, and it, it it's like a GPS, like a map, and it'll tell you, like, like they've located Pokemon in your area. So you've got to follow the map and go outside or wherever. It could be in your house and find the Pokemon. And when you find it on the map, you kill it? there's a – no, no, no. There's a Pokeball, um, and you capture it. So you've got to get it into the ball. So there's a ball on the screen, and you have to, like, throw it at the Pokemon, and it, when it catches it, you – you get it, you train it, and then you battle other people's Pokemon. Like that's it the, sounds like it sounds like the sort of stuff I used to do walking around the house when I was doing drugs. It, well, it was a, <laughs> I it didn't was need a, the phone was, for that. You know, the card game and the TV show and the games in the '90s. It was very popular. It has been very popular. See, I hate this because there was a game that Corey got all of us into. Mm. That's called Ingress. That uh, that Google made, and it was kind of the similar style. Is that all these locations were set up and they were portals and then you would have to go and attack other people take it over just different not the same but very very similar in the style that gets you up get you active move around to try to do this stuff and i swear to god I, anytime i told anyone about it they made fun of me like i can't believe you're getting up and going out to play a game and now this thing comes along and everyone is playing it everywhere and apparently the reason i bring it up is because this includes a disney world and like the parks are now full of people, just walking around looking at their phones. It was bad enough already, right? Mm-hmm. I was, was going to say <laughs> is that we've already we already had quite the quite the issue with you know the Walking Dead 
um, down Main Street. And now apparently, you know, that wasn't enough. And we've got people. You know what I love to do? When they're walking right towards you and they're not looking for them, wait until they're about three feet in front of you and scream, Ha! <laughs> well, you got people walking off cliffs. You got people walking in the rivers. And as I mentioned to someone yesterday, uh, there is a very fine line. Actually, I said it to Craig this morning. There is a very fine line between accident and natural selection. Um, it's called thin in the herd. Thin in the herd. Nature, nature finds a way. Um, and, uh, but yeah, this is apparently a thing right now. And uh, at the risk of sounding like the old Jewish man who was just yelling at me in my office, um, I, I don't understand. <laughs> I, I just think, don't understand. I think it's a really good thing. It's a game that is hooked children, and a big part of this game is getting up and moving around. You can't play it sitting down, That's so it's the encouraging. Only thing I'll That's, yeah, it is, I yeah, agree. it is. I mean, you should be looking where you're going and not stepping out into the street completely. Driving. But yeah, sorry, and I apologize too. I'm learning from chat now. I don't know enough about Pokemon Go, but it is apparently the people who built Ingress built this game as oh, well really? too yeah they so. i was going to tell you but just oh. the same room you guys no, I didn't know. Know. no thank <laughs> you i d i don't care about it i got made fun of enough for playing oh ingress. no I don't tell me going Corey to... is going to start doing this now no he likes ingress it's more adult i think it's funny that oliver liked it because this is what caused brexit <laughs> All the british people just left england following pokemon uh, All right, so I wanted to just get, no. get that out there. Uh, right, before we move on to rapid fire, since I have both Rhino and Oliver in the studio, obviously we don't have anybody in the parks today to uh, do a, a live uh, live feed. But Oliver uh, worked on a video that he wanted to put together, just something creative and artistic um, to kind of stretch those muscles, I guess. And uh, so he, sp he spent some time in the Magic Kingdom over the last several weeks. And he showed this to me earlier, and I thought it was fantastic, so I thought we would share it with you. So, Oliver, you want to take it from there? Yeah, sure. Um, you pretty much set it up for me. It's just a video I've been working on very slowly since I, since I started, actually. I think it's my, my second week, but I've not really focused on it much. So, um, yeah, I finally finished it yesterday. So, uh, yeah, um, as soon as everyone's Could you move communicating the door? with Craig, <laughs> we're going to... Get it played for you. <clears throat> there we go. Let's move that back. Awesome job. Very cool. Yeah, How'd you make the rides go faster? Um, it, <laughs> Very talented. The magic of editing. Just going to say as well, normally we'd mute the microphones if you heard anything clanking in the background, but due to technical issues we've had, um, that's probably what you heard. So if you want to see it without uh, weaker audio, you can go over to uh, the Diz YouTube channel and it will be live uh, after the show. So that's youtube.com slash WDW info. That's correct. I think Care of Hell progress moving that fast would be more fun. <laughs> yeah, really? Really? <laughs> so you pushed back into Keep the me awake. I was thinking about the riverboat. <laughs> or it's a carousel of progress meets mission space. They have a child. Yeah. 
Um, all right. Well, thank you for that, Oliver. Very Great cool. Job. Good job. Thank and, you. And uh, we're going to move on to Rapid Fire. We'll start with you, Mr. Major. All right. Disney Visa offer. They save up to 25% on premium rooms or 20% on standard rooms at Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa. Really? And Disneyland Hotel or save 10% at Disney's Paradise Pier. Hold on. Wait till you hear the dates. Please. August 14th, 2016 to September 29th. Of 2016. You're kidding. Now, there's a Disney Visa offer, and usually these then become open to everybody. And as of right now, recording this, we haven't heard that they're open to everybody when yet. Was the, I mean, even, when was the last time they did this? It's an unprecedented summer is what we're having. Here, all the deluxe hotels have sales. Here, they're having sales. Wow. But, but, Attendance is down. Yep. Let me, I'm going to tell you, folks, you know, I, I know I'm a broken record. I talk about... Go to Disneyland, go to Disneyland. Oh, my God, go to Disneyland. Get the card just for this. And listen to this. You don't see this. You don't see these kind of discounts out there. Uh, book before sep- uh, September 15, 2016. Savings on premium rooms are available on premium deluxe and woods garden courtyard rooms. Select concierge rooms and paradise artisan and regal suites. Get out. I'm telling you. Wow. Unheard of. Take advantage of this, folks. If you have the Disney visa, and if you don't, get it. Just for this. Get it for this. And I, I love my Disney visa. I use it all the time. I love the gift cards I get from it. I use it specifically for these type of things. I don't use it as a regular card. Yeah. I get other benefits from other right. stuff. So, all right, do it. All right, thank you. Never mind. Kevin. All right. Um, I keep getting emails about traveling with us next year on Adventures by Disney. We have a backstage magic in July and our China trip in October. At of this 17. Point, of 17. Excuse, yeah, next year. At this point in 2017. At this point, both trips are full. Those are the only ABD trips we have planned. And the one I keep getting asked about the most is the backstage magic. If you're interested in doing a backstage magic with the Diz and Dreams Unlimited Travel, and John and I are definitely going. I'm not sure who else is attending. But we are going to be there October 23rd through the 28th of this year for Halloween. We will be going to the Halloween party, and the parks will be all decorated for the holiday. So if you're interested in going on a backstage magic with us, this is your opportunity. I don't know what we're going to do in 2018. That seems like a very long way away, and it's not something we'll consider until the beginning of next summer. But if you're interested, we have space in not much, but we do have some space in this October's trip. But it's your last chance until 2018 to travel with us to Backstage Magic. And as we've said many, many times before, ABD is really good to our group because we always get to do some pretty amazing things. Different than the regular ABD groups get to do. Now, Kevin at DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Kathy? Mine is they moved the bus stop at the Beach and Yacht Club, and now they have moved it over to the convention entrance at the um, Yacht Club, and there'll be um, signs up if you're not sure where to go. Directly. Is this you. permanent, or is this temporary no, Temporary they do something? while they work on the bus stops. That's it. Awesome. Thank you, Kathy. Mrs. Martin. Okay. Um, Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin will be having their Santastic Weekends starting August 28th through the 27th, and then again at Labor Day, which is September 2nd through the 4th of this year, 2016. This sounds fun. (laughs) Um, It does sound fun. So um, there's going to be over 100 tons of sand used to create an intricate sand-sculpted art display, which will obviously be the highlight of the event. Um, They'll get to view a live performance of someone sculpting the actual art and then um, there's going to be different activities so master sand sculpture demonstrations sand sculpting classes speed sand demonstrations which I think would be really cool to watch to see how fast they can actually do what they're gonna do and make it come to life Um, a DJ dance in the sand party cinema on the sand and so much more each fun day begins at noon where you can watch all of these different things that are gonna happen Um, there's gonna be craft beer on the beach also, photo opportunities, and then the evening winds. 
Wait, what? Oh, the evening winds down. down. Oh, like wind? <laughs> what? <laughs> winds down with the cinema on the sand. Um, there is an event schedule for each weekend. I'm not going to go through that because it's long. So if you're interested or you will be there, check it out. There's a link on the website. Awesome. Thank you, Mrs. Martin. Mr. Green. Hello. Um, mine is uh, about a new dessert we may see coming, hopefully, to the Pineapple Lanai at the Polynesian Village Resort. Um, there is the shaved ice treat. Shave. Sh- shave. No D. Blah, blah, blah. Shave ice treat uh, coming to the Pineapple Lanai at Disney's Polynesian. I actually went down there to get a photo of it uh, just the other day whilst I was staying there, but I got told it was just a test, um, and hopefully they'll be bringing it back in the future. So... <laughs> Uh, if it's going to be as popular as um, as the Dole Whip, um, yeah, it's something to look forward to. Uh, well, I'll tell you, you know, it's uh, Shave Ice is very popular throughout the Hawaiian Islands. Um, and, of course, Matsumoto's Shave Ice a- on uh, the North Shore uh, of, Ho- of Oahu is, you know, the best place to get it. So, I mean, I'm not expecting Matsumoto's, but I'm interested to see what they do with it. I'm excited about it because we love Shave Ice. I have actually seen a photo of it. And it looks really impressive. It's a huge, huge portion. That you yeah, get. it's so a very. It's, it looks yeah. like a big snow cone, but yeah. they pour like condensed milk and mm. different flavors on it. And I know, I know, I made the same face, Kevin. I made the same face, but then you, know, you try it. it. Yeah, I've had it. I didn't. You didn't like it. it? Yeah. Not here, but in on Hawaii. In Hawaii. But did you get it with? Did you try it without the condensed milk? No. No. There's because they'll just do the flavors, and that's delicious too. Um, but that's just a snow cone then, right? No, it it's different. Snow cones are always like chunky ice. It, with shave ice, it's very fine. Yeah. So it's the shape of the ice that's different. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's an art. I'm gonna agree with Craig. Just like snowballs in New Orleans, that nothing beats those. Not anything. Snow cones are weird and crunchy, and just snowballs and shave ice sort of melt in your mouth, for lack of a better term. Try it. Trust me. Try it. We'll see how it is, but. If you can, absolutely, I love shave ice. So, all right. So, thank you, Oliver Craigor. Okay. So, the uh, full lineup of performers is now set for 2016 Eat to the Beat concert series happening. It's available. Who's that? Food and the wine entertainment industry. <laughs> um, and you know the normals are coming back as always. We're available. Are they still alive? <laughs> yeah. Are they Wow. <laughs> They're, they were dead. they're starting to get very heavy into 80s and 90s now. So, uh, Starship. Well, because everybody from the 70s is yeah. dead. Starship's <laughs> coming back as always. Sugar Ray, uh, Wilson Phillips. Um, I'm sure Hanson. Yeah, Hanson's coming back normal uh, with Boys to Men as well, too. But new this year is uh, from 914 to 915, Wang Chung. Really? Um, mm. uh, the. I was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Wang Chung, uh, October 22nd. Everybody to the 23rd, Wang Chung tonight. Uh, Toad the Wet Sprocket. And then Get November 4th to the 6th, Delta Ray. So those Where's are the. Delta Ray? Beats the piss out of me. <laughs> Delta Dawn's brother. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think Delta Ray is in Wilson Phillips. She's the fat one in the middle. Is that her name? Delta Ray? Delta Ray <laughs> no. is... I don't... I've never heard of that. Oh. She's the chubby one who had weight loss surgery who got chubby again. Oh. I full no figured. Idea. We'll figure that out. Uh, but So we have the full list up on our site as well as um, all of the, the menus in there, uh, all the menus at the kiosks that will be around World Showcase. So if you want to see those too... Uh, find that all over at the food and wine page on our website. I can't control my excitement about Toad the Wet Sprocket. <laughs> they're a big group. I love them. Yeah, um, they're a popular I'd be group. I'm most excited to see them. Probably the most contemporary, Julie, right? Actually, nothing in common <laughs> except <laughs> that we both breathe Stop oxygen. Stop putting your hand in my shot. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong way. Oh. <laughs> oh, all right. Man. Well, that will do it for a rapid fire. That will also do it for our show for this week. So we hope you enjoyed it. And we'll be back with you again next week with another edition of the Diz Unplugged. Thanks for being with us, everyone. And remember, go to Disneyland, and while you're doing that, stay out of the damn lakes. Bye.